for uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, speak uh, to you uh, this morning. So uh, my presentation today is going to be about 5G advance. And uh, that is the, the work uh, ongoing in SwitchPP uh, right now. But then the, the work we are doing now in SwitchPP on 5G advance has a lot of implication on our the roadmap and migration toward next generation. So I, I, I hope this topic will be interesting to, uh, to you today. So let's go, go on to the next slide. Okay, it's giving me trouble. Slide number two. Yeah, okay. So, um, right, so if here you can see um, the, the uh, before we, we talk about the, uh, of the technology uh, roadmap, let's uh, first review the status of 5G uh, today. Uh, here today, we have already 290 live 5G network deployed uh, worldwide. Uh, if we look at this speed, this is actually faster than any previous uh, generation. If we compare to the, uh, the status of deployment at the, at the same time in the generation. So this is actually record setting uh, rollout uh, for, for 5G. And a uh, lot of uh, network and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, um, for 5G, if we want to get the whole benefit of 5G, we need to have the standalone uh, network. And today we have more than 40 uh, standalone uh, network uh, worldwide. And uh, for, for 5G, it's very important to have a mid-band uh, rollout. And today, mid-band 5G covers 30% of the population at the end of 2023. And uh, uh, still, I, I would say, even though it's a record-setting deployment and rollout, it is still early in the 5G uh, deployment phase. Today, only 24% of 5G, uh, 4G nodes have been upgraded to, to 5G. So still, we have some, some, some way to go. But uh, let's go to the, the next slide. Okay, so maybe I'm a little bit of sync here for some reason. Let's go, go to the next slide, sorry. Uh, we, we see the page three right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically the deployment I, I, I talked about. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, so um, three GPP uh, rain timeline. So here I show the three GPP uh, rain uh, timeline. So the, uh, the, the purple uh, uh, bar showing the, uh, the, the, the roadmap of 5G. So we start with 5G introduction in release 15 and then follow with 5G ev evolution work focusing on the industry IoT and, and further MIMO enhancement in release 16. But, uh, and then release really 17 additional uh, for, uh, more, more work. But now, as I mentioned, uh, we just finished uh, release 18 and just started uh, release 19. So now we, we are in the 5G advanced uh, 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 era. So the, the focus is to kind of take 5G to the next level. And uh, in the 3GPP, uh, there are probably around 15 or so features standardized uh, for 5G advance. But in Ericsson, we consider uh, these few features as the flagship uh, 5G feature. So the flagship 5G features we consider include RedCap. This is a reduced capability uh, devices, and then XR, uh, and then mobility and network energy uh, saving and AIML and further uh, MIMO enhancement. So this work will continue uh, until release 20 and maybe a little bit beyond. But then already starting from the next release, we are going to ship more focus towards 6G. So uh, starting in release 20, we are going to have 6G uh, technical study and then follow up by a, a work item in uh, release uh, 21. So if this um, uh, uh, timeline holds, we can expect a complete uh, 6G spec at the end of 2028. So the important thing for 5G advance is really to, uh, to learn and to learn the, these uh, new features we are thinking about and have a roadmap going to 6G. And hopefully when the 6G is uh, standardized, we know how to do it better and uh, to cater to even more uh, use cases. So 5G advance is really paving the way uh, toward uh, 6G. So let's go on to the next slide. Yeah. So as I, I mentioned, uh, 5G Advance, we consider these features as uh, flagship uh, 5G Advance features. So I'm going to touch upon these features and probably a little deeper dive into uh, AIML because we see that has the potential to really uh, change the performance and how we manage the network, how we how we uh, uh, run the network, how, how do we configure the uh, uh, re radio resource for, for, for end user, for sp specific slides of the network, 
uh, very profoundly. So I'm going to uh, spend a little bit more time on AI ML, uh, diving into a specific use case that we are, we are looking uh, at right now. Let's go on to the next one. So let me start with uh, recap. So uh, recap, uh, this stands for reduced capability uh, devices. And uh, why this is so important? As uh, the operator in the world invests on 5, 5G, and they upgrade their, the, the, the 4G and now to, to 5G. And uh, they, they are building a lot of capacity and increasing the 5G footprint. It's really important to allow operator to have an opportunity to monetize uh, their investment, up monetize 5G. And uh, if you look at the uh, device cost today, still uh, this kind of cost level is not suitable for some use cases. So basically, if we look at this uh, uh, um, uh, drawing on the right hand side, you see this uh, uh, famous uh, triangle. So 5G initially had these uh, three uh, triangles in mind. So EMBB, that's basically the, the mainstream uh, use cases, but 5G, uh, was intended also to, to expand the use cases to cover massive IoT, for example, and also this ultra-reliable low-latency communication. And today we basically refer this as time-critical uh, communication. So it was designed to address these uh, three uh, categories of use cases, but still there are a lot of use cases kind of sitting between these uh, three triangles. And uh, for example, here uh, we, can, we can think about like wearable use cases, like uh, video surveillance use cases, and a lot of IoT, uh, a lot of industrial uh, sensing uh, use cases that are not uh, really the kind of fit into this uh, three uh, corner in, in, in the triangle. So basically, these are the use cases that Red Cap uh, uh, feature try to, uh, to cover. So you can actually think about uh, Red Cap is basically taking the space that is covered by uh, uh, LTE, category one, two, three, and four. Uh, devices. And if we don't have uh, a roadmap for, for, for these use cases, they, they would rely on, continue to rely on LTE network. But at some day, LTE network will be sort of uh, sunset and uh, yeah, and that would be not a, a good situation. So we had the urgent need to really introduce uh, the uh, a ro technology roadmap for, for, for these use cases so they can uh, migrate on to, to 5G uh, and use 5G uh, network. So basically that is what Red Cap is, is all about. Let's uh, go to the next slide. Okay, so I mentioned the three uh, main use case categories. So wearables. So if we look at the, the wearable uh, uh, use cases, uh, here we, we show a range of uh, 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 reference bit rate. So it can be like as low as five megabits per second and as high as 50 megabits per second for downlink and two to five megabits per second for uplink. And also it requires a battery uh, lifetime up to like two weeks. So this uh, requirement is quite different from uh, the, the EMPP requirement or like the, the massive MTC requirement of, or from the uh, URLC requirement. So there's a specific need to really uh, cater the technology toward these uh, 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 use cases. And then the video surveillance, again, you can see uh, uh, data rate range and maybe for, for uh, video surveillance, end-to-end uh, -end latency is Im important to, to consider, but it's not really that tight. It, uh, it just needs to be less than 500 milliseconds. So we don't really need like, you know, like the URLC or like EMPP type of uh, latency uh, requirement. And industrial sensor, you can see the data rate uh, requirement is low, latency is also not that demanding but then the battery life is very uh, demanding. So basically the red cap package try to consider all this and then try to uh, uh, kind of tailor the, the 5G technology toward the needs of these uh, different uh, uh, use case categories. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so then speaking about device uh, uh, power, power the, uh, or battery lifetime, so uh, there's actually an, an, uh, an uh, ongoing work also to address that. And that is the wake up signal and wake up radio uh, uh, work item right now in, in, in release 19. So uh, we recall, we talk about the industrial sensor use cases, the battery lifetime need to be multiple years. And uh, today, one the main the reason for, for uh, not getting the, such a long battery life is basically the device spending so much energy on monitoring uh, paging. So device basically uh, wake up to, to, to check paging 
during the patient occasion, you can see the 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 the, uh, the drawing on on the top uh, right hand uh, corner there. There's a patient occasion PO there. So the the device is configured to monitor uh, patient occasion every so often. Typically, it's once every uh, few few seconds, or if they're in the idle mode, maybe the once in say 20, 20 seconds uh, or or so. And basically, uh, it kind of keep doing that, doing that, and uh, it 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 uh, drain the, the battery a lot. And I mean, for for smartphone use cases, maybe uh, the, the user does use the phone for for data session. Maybe that's not not a big problem. For a lot of IoT uh, use cases, actually the device does not consume uh, data so much. Then it kind of end up spending uh, energy just monitoring a patient. So that is not not desirable. And uh, this is something the switch PP is addressing now with this wake up signal and wake up the radio uh, item. So the idea is basically to uh, design a very specific wake up signal right before the patient occasion. And so the device can use a specifically designed a receiver or radio to monitor the wake up signal. And this, uh, the, the design of wake up signal is to, is to allow very simple operation uh, for, the, for the receiver monitoring this uh, specific uh, wake up signal. And uh, this uh, receiver, the only test is only to, to receive this wake up signal. Once it receives the, the wake up signal, it can wake up the main receiver. The main receiver is really the power hungry one because it performs a lot of different functions and the circuit is more general purpose because uh, it's not only designed to, to receive the wake up signal. So by doing this uh, arrangement, uh, we can uh, uh, save the, the device power very, very significantly and uh, to be able to achieve uh, multi-year uh, device uh, battery uh, lifetime. So this is ongoing right now, and it has the IoT fo focus, but also the interest is so high. So a lot, uh, it also kind of spread to other uh, use cases like XR or, or smartphone. Let's go to next slide. Okay, so uh, one constraint uh, when we discuss the, the wake up signal and then wake up the radio design is we have to fit into the current architecture of uh, 5G. Basically, 5G today use uh, all, uh, all um, uh, transmitter. So the wake up signal need to be uh, generated through the, the, this such an, uh, such a, an architecture. So, uh, and that basically put a little bit constraint. And if we look at the, uh, uh, the, the design on, on the receiver side, uh, we, if we want to make it simple, and we realize the modulation uh, need to be something like on of key in. Because with on of key in, the device can just integrate the energy, and that can be done with a simple diode, or with a specific pattern, maybe matching to the, uh, to the signature of the device that is being uh, uh, waken up. So uh, that posed a little bit uh, a challenge. But it's a beautiful mathematical uh, problem, and uh, so the the approach then is try to figure out this um, uh, the modulation simple value that we inject in the frequency domain according to the OVM uh, trans transmitter structure, and then with a certain combination of the modulation value uh, for the for the symbol in the frequency domain after the inverse FFT it can behave like the on of gain uh, signal. So here I'm showing an example on the right-hand side. You can see the ideal on of gain signal represented by the, um, uh, the, the, this um, uh, uh, red line. And uh, it, uh, because you can see that the on is the kind of level one and the uh, off is basically uh, level uh, zero. But through this uh, uh, approach that I, I mentioned, using the existing of the end transmitter architecture, but just play, play with the modulation value, you basically can generate this blue curve. And it, beha it, it looks very much like the of key in, although it's not ideal, but it's good enough to kind of serve the purpose of a wake up signal. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. And Another issue uh, we are trying to address with 5G Advance is to uh, enhance uh, the network energy uh, efficiency. So the, as the, the traffic uh, continue to grow in the network, uh, operators are the realizing uh, the, their network consume more and more power. So uh, uh, in fact, today, uh, if we look at the global uh, operator uh, network, they consume 2% of the entire the, uh, uh, electricity. And that is pretty, pretty uh, uh, significant. So that's one, one issue uh, that is being addressed now. And this will continue to be addressed in, in 6G. 
So one issue is uh, I try to illustrate uh, with, with the, the figure on the left hand side uh, with LTE is you look at the, uh, the uh, digital baseband and also the analog uh, 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 or PA, power consumption. Uh, you can, first of all, you can see that uh, for when the network load, let's say is zero, uh, LTE network actually consume uh, a lot of power already, even in, in that state. And that is the, uh, in, in a large extent due to uh, the PA, because there's, there's a lot of always on uh, signal uh, that, is, uh, that need to be transmitted even when the CO load is, 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 uh, is uh, very low. And that has been addressed or, or that has been addressed by 5G as well. So you shift to the, uh, uh, look at the figure in the middle. You can see for 5G, uh, if you look at the PA power consumption, when the network low is, is low, it consumes uh, very little power. And that is because uh, the always on signal is, is greatly reduced in the 5G uh, network. But then if you look at the digital baseband, it still consume uh, a lot of, uh, uh, it still consume power, even when the, the almost the same uh, power uh, level when the uh, uh, low is, is low. So this is something we want to uh, address uh, go going uh, forward. We want to be able to reduce the digital baseband power consumption when the, uh, when the, the, the network low is low. We want to uh, reduce even further the, the power consumption caused by the always on uh, signal. So in 5G advance, there are the solution uh, for the different solution to address uh, efficiency in different angle. So you can think about, you know, saving power, uh, maybe turning some kind of antenna beam or antenna ports in the, in the spatial domain. You can uh, think about how do we make the uh, cell go into the micro uh, sleep mode. I mean, this kind of micro sleep uh, stay is very common uh, for the on the device side, but now we are thinking more and more uh, about the micro sleep state on the network side. So try to uh, identify opportunity and allow the uh, the network to go to a uh, micro sleep, and then uh, design the ne uh, network protocol allow to uh, kind of switch between the network uh, micro sleep and uh, and the active uh, more uh, quite uh, quite uh, rapidly, and then. Um, uh, in, in the power domain and try to adapt the, uh, the, the, the power uh, uh, from the transmitter according to the, the user uh, scenario. For example, if uh, suddenly there's a user at the cell edge uh, kind of disappear, does it, uh, disappear, and then most of the user we know for, through some kind of network intelligence, they are closer to the uh, uh, base station tower, then we can actually uh, reduce the, uh, the, the um, carrier uh, power uh, a little bit. So this is a very, very important issue that's been addressed right now. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so another uh, uh, feature that's been uh, addressed now is um, uh, mobility. And uh, why this is important now? I mean, this was uh, quite not a problem before uh, because uh, in, the, in the earlier generation, we didn't envision uh, cellular connectivity will be used for mission critical or time critical communications. But now, increasingly, we are seeing 5G being used for, for time critical uh, communications. So uh, when we think of, think of uh, time critical communications, any interruption or any latency spike, or, I mean, uh, although the latency spike may be quite, quite, quite small, maybe it's go from say like 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, but still in a lot of use cases, this kind of uh, latency spike is not desirable. So one of the co causes for latency spike is actually mobility events. And when there's mobility event, the UE is hand, hand, being handed over from one cell to another, this can cause uh, some uh, latency uh, uh, increases. And this is uh, uh, the, the problem uh, 5G Advance is addressing using this uh, layer one, layer two uh, triggered uh, mobility. I think due to the, the, the time constraint, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Maybe I, you, you can see the, the explanation Later in the next slide. So here, the, the key thing is uh, the the, uh, the UE will be provided with RRC configuration information already when the candidate cell list is provided to, to the UE. So not, not only UE know which which are the candidate cells, it also configure already to to know how to operate uh, if the, the UE is, is handed over to any of the candidate cell. So this RRC configuration. Uh, it's a very, very important step when it comes to the candidate cell. So once the UE is handed over 
to a, to a candidate sale, it already has all the RRC uh, set, set up in need to operate in a new sale. And this really reduced the handover uh, interruption uh, very, very significantly. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, XR, and we are all very excited about XR. XR we see could, could be a paradigm shift. It could be uh, a new way for a lot of users to interact with the cyberspace uh, going forward. So CGPP is preparing uh, a lot of features to make sure that as the traffic from XR devices continue to grow, uh, the standard has a good uh, solution to handle such uh, uh, traffic uh, growth in the coming years. So uh, the standard now try to uh, take into account a lot of uh, characteristics of uh, XR traffic. For example, uh, XR uh, traffic uh, require a tight, tighter uh, delay budget. For example, uh, XR traffic can have different uh, uh, or can have multiple uh, traffic flows. And these different flows can have the very different uh, requirement in terms of data rate, in terms of latency, and the, the video data size uh, is, is variable and the, the periodic traffic uh, is according to the frame rate, uh, for example. So all these have been uh, taken into account in the XR enhancement work. So one thing I can mention may, may, maybe is the, um, the uh, periodic traffic uh, aspect. So if you look at the, the frame rate of 60 uh, 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 frames per, per second, this frame rate does not align with the 3GPP uh, slot rate or the subframe uh, interval. Uh, well, so this has been addressed uh, with, with the enhancement in release 18. So with this uh, enhancement, uh, the UE does not need to wake up uh, uh, um, longer to, just because of this kind of misalignment between the low layer uh, uh, periodicity and the frame rate in the, uh, in the application layer. So yeah, due to a time constraint, I have to uh, move on to the next uh, uh, slide. How, how, how many more minutes do I have? Uh, you can take another five minutes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. And, and MIMO continue to be a very important feature uh, because it has a lot of implication about uh, the uh, network capacity. And uh, so for uh, for five years advanced, uh, this uh, MIMO feature is continue to be uh, enhanced. So I can uh, highlight a few the, uh, uh, important uh, features. So uh, one, one feature is allow even more uh, uplink uh, uh, MIMO uh, multiplexing. So uh, uh, with the release 18 enhancement uplink, uh, the operator can multiplex up to eight uh, simultaneous uh, UE transmission uh, and also up to the uh, eight simultaneous stream from a particular uh, UE. And this has uh, been uh, uh, introduced. And then the, uh, there's a feature that is high, highly interesting to a lot of uh, a company that is uh, multi-point uh, coherent transmission. And that this now is being studied and uh, yeah, will be the, introduced if the, the benefit is found to be uh, significant. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so now I'm going to spend my next few slides on AIML because this is a very hot topic right now. So uh, if we go on to the next, let's see then. Um, Right, okay, so uh, 3GPP AI ML for physical layer. And right now there are three use cases being uh, focused. So one is CSI compression and prediction, and one is beam management. And this again relate to multiple antenna uh, features. How do we uh, manage the beam in, in a better way so the user is connected to the best beam. And then the, when the, the user uh, has mobility is switched to, to the net, uh, to the, to a new best uh, beam uh, in a tiny fashion. And then how to use AI ML to in, enhance uh, positioning uh, accuracy. And then actually to, on top of this, I, in my opinion, uh, probably the most uh, important work is how do we introduce the right uh, framework and uh, have a good solution for life cycle uh, management. Not only for the use cases that have been identified so far, but uh, if we have a good framework and life cycle management, they can also work for additional new uh, use cases that may be identified in the future. So today I'm going to use positioning to highlight uh, the, the benefit of AI ML. So in this case, we started the indoor factory uh, setting and uh, the factory size is like 120 meter by 60 meter. And then the, we look at different uh, type of environment characterized by different uh, line of sight probability, different clutter uh, density and uh, clutter height and so on. 
So you can see the the layout of the the trans, trans, uh, transceiver nodes in in the factory in the in the drawing. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay. So uh, if you look at conventional position and method, this is based on triangular angulation. And uh, with this method, we need uh, enough line of sight link to be able to, to uh, figure out the uh, device position. And so one of the steps is to identify line of sight uh, uh, link. So here, the, the performance here shown the performance achieved by conventional uh, scheme. You can see that uh, the different percentages indicate different uh, probability of line of sight. So you can see when the line of sight probability is, uh, is uh, 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 reduced, then the, the accuracy becomes uh, uh, worse. And then, the, um, um, sorry, I think I, I said it wrong. The, the probability is the probability of a clutter. So as the probability of a clutter increases, the line of sight uh, uh, probability actually decreases. So you can see the purple line actually give the worst performance uh, there. So uh, with um, uh, AI ML, uh, one thing we realized is the, uh, the, the algorithm was able to identify line of sight uh, link with some higher accuracy. So with the conventional uh, approach, uh, it can uh, achieve around 80% accuracy, but with AI ML, it can achieve 96% uh, uh, accuracy. And then the, um, um, with uh, uh, line of sight, um, the 90 percentile uh, position and accuracy uh, can be improved from uh, nine meter that is achieved by conventional scheme to 0.1. A meter achieved by AI ML uh, approach. So that's a huge improvement as we see. But I think what's mo most amazing is actually the, uh, the performance in the uh, non line of sight environment. And here, the, the non conventional, oh, sorry, the, the, the conventional approach basically uh, cannot really achieve very good uh, accuracy because it cannot find enough line of sight link to help uh, triangulation. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so here uh, we show a different uh, uh, input uh, type for the AI uh, ML the algorithm to, to process. So you can think of, think of channel impulse response is probably the most obvious one because this, this, this capture the entire uh, information about the channel. And then the power delay profile, basically to tell you the, 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 the delay and, and, and the power of the different paths. And then the delay profile basically does not tell you the, the power only tell you the timing of the different path. And with the AI uh, algorithm, all these three uh, input type actually works, and, but they achieve a different uh, uh, position and accuracy. So here we try uh, a, actually a pretty um, uh, cluttered environment. So you can see the line of sight probability is actually very, very low. It's only 0.8%. And in this case, yeah, most of the, the, the link actually are long line of sight. And you can see that, yeah, the, the position accuracy, even with this very challenging environment, is, uh, they, it can be uh, very good. It, it can be like 20 or 25 meter, sorry, sorry, 20 or 25 uh, centimeter accuracy uh, with, the, with this uh, uh, CIR as the input type. But even with the delay uh, profile as the input type, you can see uh, accuracy is still pretty good. So, uh, we see a huge potential using AIML for positioning uh, accuracy enhancement. Let's go to the next slide. So I'm going to skip my, my next slide just to, for the time constraint and maybe skip the, the next slide as well. So I, just uh, for the, maybe the remaining two, two minutes, I'm going to jump onto 6G. So uh, 6G, uh, it's actually not that far uh, away. So here I, I, I already talked about 3GPP uh, timeline. And actually, already there's ITU uh, process that kind of uh, set in motion. So at, uh, right now, uh, ITU is uh, is discussing the use case and the requirement, and then the, they will lead to the uh, um, discussion about uh, uh, further uh, kind of KPI for for 6G, and then at some point it will lead to the uh, evaluation and certification. So all this is uh, is coming up in, in in the coming years. Let's go on to the next slide. And so if you look at the technology uh, components for 6G, so here I list all the, the most important technology components. And if you recall about the 5G advanced uh, uh, flagship features, that's actually a very much over, uh, overlap. So that's what I mean, the learning we are doing today is going to pave the way to, toward uh, 6G. Let's go on to the next slide. So 
already we talk about the the, the, the blue uh, sorry the, the green boxes and then you would look at the 6G uh, technology component there are additional uh, blue boxes like full direct radio like uh, sensing like uh, zero energy IoT uh, satellite NTN and ORAN and, and so on so there, there will be uh, more uh, uh, com uh, component that we need to uh, 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 take into account for for 6G let's go to I think, yeah, maybe I would just jump to my conclusions, like go to the, the next one. Yeah. So pushing the boundaries on the way to uh, 6G and uh, uh, the, the 5G will, uh, will continue uh, uh, its uh, deployment and, uh, and the technology ev evolution to, to support more demanding uh, 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 services. And this is, is actually a continuum. Uh, it's not going to be a, a, a sudden, you know, a, a, a jump in terms of, you know, use case requirement when, when the 6G comes. So it will be kind of con continuing uh, e e evolution toward the more demanding use case requirement. And then we are going to evolve the technology uh, continuously to address the, uh, the um, requirement. But if you look at the, the learning we, 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 we have today, it's mainly we foresee uh, we need to uh, connect devices with a broad spectrum of capability, not only EMBP, not only the XR, but also include very uh, low end devices like zero energy IoT devices. And, uh, and so how do we design a good framework of 6G to be able to connect uh, devices with vastly different uh, capability? And that is very important to address from day one. And then the, as I mentioned, uh, 6G need to cater to a wide array of use cases with diverse requirement. How do we have one network that, that can cater to uh, diverse requirements? And this also an important uh, uh, consideration from day one. And then uh, 6G, how do we foster ongoing innovation through an open modular disaggregated architecture? It's very important. The invention does not stop uh, after the, the first release of 6G, it will continue. And how do we have a good architecture to continue to allow open and uh, continue uh, innovation uh, that is important. And then the AI ML uh, uh, technology, technology change so fast. And how do we leverage such a uh, fast moving technology uh, development to, 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 to uh, reap the benefit of, of, of these, these de uh, development into 6G network uh, design, operation, management, and, and deployment. And that is uh, very important. Thank you so much for, for, for listening and uh, 